is David Delaney with Tenbound. I got Ryan Reiser here with the sales developers. How are you doing today, Ryan? I'm doing well. Super excited. We're back at it. Break and build. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Break and build number five is up. Um, we got a couple of emails uh, submission that we want to go through and look at the messaging. Um, we also got a couple of voicemails that were, we're having trouble um, playing. So we might not be able to get to those today, but definitely if we need to, we'll get to those next time. But I just, first of all, want to thank everybody for um, writing in, submitting your emails and um, participating. And um, and definitely keep them coming. Like for we're gonna we're gonna do a few more of these, and uh, and definitely keep the momentum up on the break and builds. Um, in the in the Q and A section, if you want to participate, we would love that. Um, we definitely want to get um, as many uh, questions, and even during the the um, break and build, if you want to write in an email that you want us to break down, we can totally do that live. Um, we're happy to to break it down for you and, and get, give you the methodology that, that Ryan and I use to, to book meetings. Um, so the Q&A is open. Feel free to jump in. We are recording this. We'll have it up on the, um, on the Tenbound YouTube site uh, right after. Uh, it usually doesn't take too long to get it up there. So um, Ryan, again, thank you so much for coming. Um, if you get us uh, just a sec, can you tell everybody about what you guys are doing over at Sales Developers? Yeah, sure. So uh, super excited to, to be back in this session with you, David. Uh, sales developers, we're on a mission to up-level the perception and profession of our uh, wonderful uh, profession here, sales development. Uh, we are working with high growth organizations who are serious about trying to figure out what we call modern outbound. So um, enabling process using modern technology, and uh, doing the best we can to uh, try to help our customers through um, interruption. Uh, so uh, that's what we do. <laughs> yeah, and you guys are doing a tremendous job. I know you guys are growing and you're, you're on the phone every day. Um, you're making the calls, you're getting people on the phone, you're using your methodology. So there's nobody better that I can think of to partner up um, on these break and builds than you. And, and I, I really appreciate your time for coming on. Um, so. Um, just a couple of quick things before we we get into it. Uh, I I wanted to bring up a uh, an article that I saw that was floating around on LinkedIn uh, about the um, the amount of robocalls that are going out there, and there was a there was a stat that came out that almost 50% Ryan of calls that are being placed right now in the system are robocalls. And I mean, I don't know about you, but I get these constantly on my phone where people just call and, and hang up, or I guess they're like 50% robots at this point. And so that was a little bit concerning to me. And I just wanted to bring it up on this because it's kind of, it's our competition almost that there's all these robo calls happening. Now it's almost 50% and we're trying to break through and get to our buyers. So the reason I bring that up is, Ryan, what are your thoughts on leaving voicemails? Like, do you leave voicemails or do you just hang up if nobody's there? Uh, it's a great question. So it depends uh, where we're at in the, the engagement from a, a sequence or cadence, whatever you want to call it, right? Uh, we all kind of use software terminology there. But is this the very first attempt to you, David, or is this um, – some point later in my 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 uh, my process for for gaining your attention. So, typically, yeah. I will I subscribe to leaving voicemails um, early. So I call this before like a quadruple tap. Right, we're going to LinkedIn. Uh, you're getting the view of my face when I when I get to your profile. If they if they're active on LinkedIn, they're going to see I viewed your profile recently. So there's like one impression. I'm not trying to connect with you yet. I'm not doing anything else besides viewing your profile. Um, verify some information, go to uh, the phone, pick it up, call. That's, that's two, that's two taps, right? My, my phone number is coming to you. Uh, three, voicemail. I'm going to leave a voicemail. Uh, and since I have your LinkedIn profile there already, uh, usually it's pretty relevant, right? It's not super generic. It's fairly relevant. And then in that voicemail, I might also reference, I'm going to go ahead and try on email, you know, 
look out for that email now. Boom, there's your quadruple tap. And uh, I will subscribe to that early in my process for the first two or three um, where I'm doing each of those channel touches. While I'm looking at each of those channels, obviously I'm also trying to gather insight. If I'm on their LinkedIn profile and it's very bare, they don't have an image, you know, obviously that's not even worth my time. If I see that they, they're not even active, right? Their profile might be complete, but you can actually see last activity. If there's no engagement there, I'm probably not going to continue that touch point because it's not worth my time. Um, I, I will move into focusing more on those other channels. Uh, but the voicemail component is, uh, is always interesting one because um, if you're using auto dialers, a lot of times you can't, you can't sequence that out. It's just like touch, 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 touch. You're just trying to get them on a phone. Um, I usually try to get those manual uh, voicemails in uh, early. And then if they haven't responded, they're not following up on my emails, they're not picking up the phone yet, um, I probably stop dropping those voicemails and, and move into just, just calling. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I would think, um, you know, the, some of the robocalls leave voicemails automatically. It's like for health insurance and I got a lot about like open enrollment and stuff like that, but I, I, I would think <laughs> you that, and my wife both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was weird. Um, I would think that, you know, if you're taking the time to, to call, you're not necessarily on like an auto dialer, but you're, you're actually dialing through your computer or dialing on the phone to just leave a quick voicemail to say, you know, this isn't a robocall, basically. I mean, you're not actually saying that, but you're saying like, hey, this is Ryan with the sales developers. Hey, this is David with Tenbound. I'm an actual person and I'm calling to reference that email that I sent. You know, I, I would, I just feel like if 50% of the calls out there are robocalls, we got to do something different to you know, state that we're actual human beings. So, so the, any other thoughts on that one, Brian? I, I always say use all the weapons you have available to you. So I know there's folks out there that will say like, it takes so much time to leave voicemails. And I agree. Yeah. Um, it, it does. If you're um, uh, leaving a voicemail every single time and um, you know, three, four, yeah. five, six times into it, but at least in the very beginning, drop it, make them aware. And, I, and just using that quadruple tap kind of idea uh, has, has dramatically increased our response rates early on in the, in the uh, cold outbound process. So right. use the weapons you have, you know. Okay, okay, cool. So the other, the other quick um, piece of data, Ryan, that I wanted to talk to you about is um, I reviewed a, a cold call statistics um, report from Gong, which um, Chris over at Gong puts out amazing research. If you guys are not, um, you know, taking a look at their research, you're, you're missing out. You just go to gong.io and subscribe to the blog. And they put out a piece of research that was based on 90,000 cold calls, which, you know, is a pretty wide statistical uh, range. And there was a few pieces of information that I wanted to throw out to you and just, just talk about real, really quickly. Um, one was that it was a little bit counterintuitive, but it said basically based on the research of, of successful cold calls that actually people are not talking enough on cold calls. So it said that um, the more time spent talking and explaining why you're calling and what you're calling about in the context actually had a better statistical conversion to setting up a meeting than spending less time talking. Um, and I thought that was really interesting because you're always like, you know, you're, it's supposed to be more of a give and take, but they actually have stated that more time talking and pitching a little bit harder than we are right now is leading to greater success based on their data. Yeah, uh, I think I read. I think I read that report. Uh, that was like a month or so ago, right, Dave? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was. Um, I wasn't really surprised, to be honest. I mean, it's it's always awesome to to read that because they they actually debunk a lot of the um, you know age old prevailing wisdom that comes out, and uh, the uh, the idea that 
you know, when you have a conversation across the table, like a discovery call that you should be more 50, 50, or even hopefully the prospects talking more to you makes a lot of sense. But for cold calling in particular, um, you know, if you're not able to get the information out, uh, you know, it makes sense to me that, you know, you're going to have, a, a a lower success rate than if, if you're talking less, because how, how are they supposed to know if you can help them or not? Right. You didn't deliver your message. Yeah. So, um, yep. but it's really, it's really cool to see that data. And, uh, uh, I think someone just asked for that link, if you can share it, uh, if you haven't started following, um, the gongs reports, I think that's, that's really, really great insight. I mean, I, I love the fact that it uh, it just helps you put data behind some of your assumptions and not, not get too caught up in what feelings and actually kind of, um, try out things that you might feel uncomfortable doing. Cause uh, obviously the data doesn't lie, at least in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll, I'll try to rig up some of the recordings that we have. And what, what I noticed on some of the recordings is that we tend to come out strong in the beginning of the cold call. And then if there's any sign of weakness in the voice or the tonality or the confidence that the prospect picks up on that, it's like blood in the water. You know, the sharks start to circle and it's like, maybe, maybe we need to kind of talk a little bit more. The data proves it. Um, the other, uh, another couple quick things in there is, um, did I catch you at a bad time? Got like the worst response is statistically was a terrible, uh, res you know, response rate to that phrase. Did I catch you at a bad time? And I hear a lot of people, I use that myself. Like I use that all the time, just out of courtesy, like, cause I didn't want to catch him like with five things in his hand or if she's running right out the door. So, but actually they came up that, did I catch you at a bad time? Didn't work. What actually works better is um, the old John Barrows expression. The reason for my call is now, do you use that at all, Ryan? It's a great, it's, it's a great, uh, great piece of feedback. So I personally am like conditioned to start all my calls the same way. I've shared this over and over and over again, where, you know, uh, first thing I do is confirm target. Second thing is introduce myself and I'll ask the time question. It's just habit, right? So, Hey, is this David Delaney? Hey, David, this is Ryan Reiser. Did I catch you? Did I catch you at a bad time? Or did I catch you with a free minute? I'll, I will use that just because I've used it forever. Um, and I've said this time and time and time again in the past where like it does, I've never, well, I, I, I'd love to see the data on this, right? I don't think I've lost opportunities because of that question. In fact, a lot of times I book more appointments with that phrase because people say, no, now's not a good time. And then I'll shift into the barrows. Well, just so you know, the reason for the call was X, Y, and Z. When, you know, are you free this afternoon for that conversation? right? Or later this day. So I go for the ask. And um, so mm. combining those two actually um, um, provide success. When someone says now's not a good time and I shift into the reason, I actually will either disqualify them out like, hey, actually, that's not me. It's someone else. Get referrals. They might, they might just say, no, not interested. And I will then ask, uh, really? Like I'll, I'll call, you know, I'm going to call them out on that. Really? I thought because of X, Y, and Z, and we'll actually just start the conversation. Because a lot of times they're just using that as a reflection. And so um, it's interesting that that, that that data shows that, but I think that it'd be even more interesting to see what happens when you combine the two and you're mm -hmm. able to kind of navigate that conversation because um, I still use it just as you mentioned, you've used it. And I don't really feel like it drops my success rate on calls. Now, keep in mind, success rate on a cold call is not high, right? <laughs> You're going to lose more often than not. So, um, you know, their data is probably much stronger than what I'm saying. Antidote. It'll, it'll be good though. I mean, for folks on the call, if, if you want to like try a, a block of calls using, Hey, the reason for my call, like going straight into it and then combining the two and then just using, did I catch you at a bad time? You know, you can mix it up every day and just, you know, even just keeping like a check, check marks on your notepad, you know, of what works and what didn't. A um, couple other quick things. Yeah, go ahead. Well, this is one thing that I think if you really want to start to figure this out, I highly recommend this book here, Navigate 2.0. Um, and mm -hmm. they actually have, um, they actually have a script that uh, it talks about 
personalities. So the reason why it works for some and some, some there's really like four personalities that you're working with as you're selling to is a fighter, an entertainer, a counselor, and a detective. And if you enter in your calls in a, a certain way, you can quickly identify who you're dealing with and shift how you should continue mm. the call, right? So okay. a fighter, if you catch a fighter, that's the person that's like, no, nope, not interested, click. And that's, you know, in certain segments, a lot of the people we deal with, right? You sell into sales, you get that a lot. Or a lot, I'm a strong fighter, right? You cold call me with that stuff, I might, I might be quick to be like, what do you want, right? What, what's the reason? Um, but an, an entertainer, like, it's going to be more like, yeah, I've got time. What's up? Thanks for calling me, right? And then so on and so forth. So there's your personality st uh, styles. And the script is really simple. Hi, is this David Delaney? Hey, David Delaney, this is Ryan Reisert. And then shut the hell up. Literally just pause. And based okay. on how they respond, you'll be able to identify which, which personality type you're working with. And then you can get into, if it's a fighter, hey, the reason for my call. If it's an entertainer, uh... David, I don't really know you. Oh, no worries. You probably don't know me, but the reason for my call was or whatever, right? So highly recommend it. Check it out. It's, it's actually something that we're, we're starting to use on our side at the sales developers. And me personally, I'm like, I even have the cheat sheet in front of me. I've got the book. I'm really getting into this and it's, uh, it's been <clears throat> enlightening uh, for the cool It's a game changer. Thank you. Thanks for the recommendation. So that's Navigate 2.0. Navigate 2.0. Dig, dig up the Amazon on that so everybody can get it. Um, Last couple of quick points from that research. Um, it's okay, actually, statistically to say, how are you? But actually works better is, how have you been? And maybe that could go to what you're talking about. If you, if you say, hey, how have you been to a fighter? They're gonna tell you to go to hell. But if you say it to somebody who's more you know, friendly, then they might, that, that statistically it works better. Um, they also determined, uh, based on their research that and this could be different by industry and stuff like that, but generally over these thousands of calls, Wednesdays and Thursdays, 4 p.m. local time to 5 p.m. and 11 a.m. to noon are going to be your best hit rate. Wednesday and Thursday, 11 a.m. to noon, 4 p.m. to 5 on Friday. That's the latest info from this huge research report. So give it a try. May, may have a couple of quick things that, that could help. Ryan, do you, um, and I'm going to start bringing up um, our email review here from one of our lucky participants. Um, do you, do you um, uh, call during like certain hours or do you just, just basically call whenever you can, whenever you get the time? So, I, I mean, I'm a big fan of time blocking. And, you know, uh, it's a little bit different for what I do just because I'm in the business of offering sales development as a service. And so I can't, I can't, uh, I can't hit the, the, the power hours, the golden hours, whatever you want to call them for everyone every day. And so I always have to, I call throughout the day. Right. And to be honest, uh, I think a lot of people like to hack time as an excuse to not make the dials later in the day. Um, yes, uh, it's tr yes, it's true that, um, you know, if you call at noon, people might be at lunch. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, yes, it's true that if you call in the morning, you might catch them before they're coming in the office. But yes, it's also true that that person might be dropping their kids off at school. And yes, it's true that that person is actually eating at their desk and you can interrupt them and, and, and um, you know, start a conversation. And so, um, you know, we talk about this all the time with target message channel timing channel is preferred channel. So, you know, do they like the phone or not is a really important piece there. And then time, like, look, everyone's schedule is different. And in fact, not everyone's like a freaking clock. So, you know, you've got to catch them when you catch them. And so um, if you're spending too much time thinking about when you should be calling someone, you're probably just avoiding making calls. And that's a problem. You could be, you could be in the call reluctance stage yep. where it's like, I, I don't want to talk to anybody. Let me just do something else. So, um, yeah, that's, that's interesting. I mean, I kind of looked at that part, like, huh, you know, I mean, I think that, you know, just making, making calling part of your routine and doing it consistently is more important than trying to time the exact moment that the, the statistics say is the best time. So, um, yeah, for what it's worth, I put the, the link to that data 
I thought that would be a good place for us to start. But um, hey, Ryan, I just want to jump in. I think that we have the audio figured out. Um, and so we'll, tr we'll play some calls as well, but I got this, this email, um, that, uh, a, a lucky, uh, viewer has sent in to break down. And I also got a question here from Jeff and, um, it's, it's, it, you know, it just says, um, what level of personalization are you using on your emails? Which is a, that's like a great question. I think people ask a lot. And, um, and so. You want to take a stab at that question, and then let's jump into this um, this message that's up on the screen. And first of all, can you see my screen? It's come through on my side. Yep. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Just hit me up in the comments, anybody um, on the call, if you can't see it or if it's not coming in clear. I can make it a little bit bigger, actually, too. Here, um, Ryan, what what kind of when you think about personalization on emails, like how how deep do you go? So again, this comes back to you know, what I said earlier too, it depends on where we're at. We follow a methodology yeah. that we talk about in our book, you know, buckets, right? So if yeah. this is an uncontacted cold lead, I've never attempted it before. The first thing I'm going to do is try to validate. And when we go through validation um, on the email front, uh, we think about persona lizing. This is like a Barrows thing as well. He's getting a lot of shout outs today. He's a smart guy. Uh, <laughs> persona, persona, personalize uh, early uh, versus personalize because a lot of times mm. you're going to spend a shit ton of time personalizing an email and it bounces, right? Or mm. you're going to personalize an email and they never open the email. Like, why are you doing that? So what we subscribe to is personalizing the first email or even the first two or three emails that might be going out in a sequence and analyzing, did they open? If somebody opens and they're in your swim lane, like this is somebody I, I've done a really good job of, of you know, researching ahead of time. And again, if you follow our methodology, then that's probably the case. At that point, that's when you wanna jump into personalization. And I wait until I have that signal of intent. In this case, it's not necessarily intent in terms of interest if they just open once, but if they're opening multiple times, I'm gonna get in there and personalize the crap out of it. I will record a video on Vidyard and get into it. Hey, I noticed you, I noticed you opened my email. Yeah, I use that technology. I think I can help you in this way, this way, and this way. Let me know if, you, if you'd be interested, right? And so start with personalization and then move into heavy personalization as soon as you have that intent information. Like, is this a channel where they're actually going to read my stuff? And at that point, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the job. Okay, so I, just, I think that Ryan just invented a new word, and that could actually end up in the dictionary. So everybody who is on this call <laughs> has seen the birth of personalization, okay? Mm -hmm. Is this the first time that that word has ever been used? Because that is a freaking awesome word. No, no, no. I think I stole that from Barrows okay. or someone else, right? For so, uh, somebody, else, somebody else For some, got that. <laughs> someone else. I, I heard it from someone else. I can't take credit for it, uh, but uh, okay. I wish okay. I made that up because that's the way so it should be, right? Start by personalizing and then personalize based on what they do. So, yep. so okay. So I got this one. This one came in from one of our, our guests and I thought it was really, really good, Ryan. And I'll tell you why, because um, just visually, you know, whether you get an email on your phone or on the desktop, like you, you definitely want to stay away from big blocks of text. And I really like how this one is um, broken out into, I mean, it's basically like three sentences. And I think we've talked about this, like a lot of posts on LinkedIn now are just, one sentence or one word, you know, broken out with tons of white space. And I, I think that it, it just makes it a lot easier to read. So what are your thoughts on the way that they have structured this visually? The structure of the email is perfect, right? I mean, that's yeah. how I want, that's how I want to see um, the framework, right? Okay, this is coming from I mean, as someone who sees this all the time, this is coming from a professional who knows what they're doing. Now, you got to be careful with this, though, because what I've found is that if you're, if you're using this type of format and you're selling to folks who are on top of this, right, you're selling into high tech, you're selling into marketing, you're selling into IT who get these emails all the freaking time, this might not be good. 
But if you're selling into, because it, it looks like everyone else, right? So you got to be careful with yeah. this. But if you're selling into segments like non-traditional, like that are not getting traditionally hit, like we, we have a customer who sells fat machines. It's called CryoSkin. Fat machines to, uh, fat loss machines to like uh, hair salons and day spas. And you send emails mm. like this and it crushes it. Like literally a, a basic email like this set 38 meetings in, in, a, in, in a send to 500 people. It was insane, right? Like meetings set in, in the very first email um, because they're not used to getting this. And so um, structurally it looks good, but you got to be careful because now that everyone sees this and they'll continue to see stuff like this, all of a sudden it becomes numbing for certain people. So it's okay to switch it up and differentiate it. And I have a, an idea on, on some of that stuff that you can start doing, you know, later we can share. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, and so um, that's interesting because outside of the tech industry, the, all these strategies and tactics that we talk about every day in the sales development world are really kind of, it's kind of a green space, you know, it's, it's, it's very open right now, but we, you know, we're kind of jaded in the tech industry. So we see this a lot. Um, so let's talk about this. So it, it asks, you know, are you familiar with the, um, you know, tool or benefit that's being used by top companies let me introduce you to you know whatever company that you're talking to what do you think about that do you think that that's pretty compelling it's hard with the blanks that are in there but i think it's great to start with uh, like they're trying to get into the um i'm assuming familiar with something some sort of tool that's being used by others like are they yeah. if they're familiar with that um, that's mm -hmm. a great starter because, you know, you want to start with, uh, you know, what is this about? How do I get context around what you're telling me? Right. The faster you can help me understand, is this re relevant? You know, yeah. I'm either going to go in or out. And so I, I think that, you know, getting to the point is good. Uh, typically I like to lead with, you know, if that was like, if it was familiar with, maybe it's a problem, you know, instead of like a tool or something that's, that's that's similar or that, that's that's you know i guess uh challenging others like them in the role that might like that same framework would be uh would, would be helpful but this is stuff that you know obviously you have to test and test and test so i like i like to start here right okay i know what you're talking about but Let, let's yeah. go on if it's relevant i'm probably going to read on right the one thing i don't like is getting right into let me introduce you to myself already why why are you already talking about you you know, talk about me a little mm -hmm. bit more. Talk about something that's a little more relevant to me. Um, I'd like to see a little bit of a change there. Maybe. Okay. Maybe that's fun. Yeah. So, so um, my buddy Matt Admanson at EverString gave me a great one. It's it's context, content, and a challenge. And I I think um, I think what we have here it's it's great context. So immediately I can contextualize. Why this? Why is this person reaching out, and what does it have to do with me? And then they also, you know, being used by. So they've got some demonstration of like social proof. So it's like it's going to be okay because somebody else in, is using this that I trust. Um, that's tricky though because if you're doing a lot of different emails to a lot of different industries, you got to make sure that it's a company that is relevant to that industry. But then the the content is. Um, you know, something that is uh, a problem specific to me as, as, you know, that I'm going through my day, like how this could help me. And so I think where this one um, could be a little bit stronger in the middle is, as you mentioned, is here are the, you know, the problems that people like you are facing. And here's a way that we've helped, you know, in that middle paragraph. Um, and then where's, where's the challenge? Like, you know, is this something that you deal with or are you dealing with something like this? Or, you know, like, is this something that is bothering you enough for you to reply back to my email? I don't see that there in this one either. It's more of just a call to action that maybe I'm not quite ready for. Is that fair? Yeah. And I would be curious to know where this was at in terms of the, is this the, I mean, it's, it's asking right away, like how familiar with this. So I'm assuming this is probably like the first email and you're getting right into give me your time, right? Introducing me yeah. and give me your time. And, you know, while you might've got my interest right away, it's like, I don't, 
I don't know if I care about your features. I don't care. I don't know if uh, I care about you just yet. Like what, what kind of value can you potentially provide to me? What kind of thought provoking question could you ask me? Uh, you know, what kind of, I know this value is overused in this because it's like, you know, but how can you help me? Right. We talk about this in the, the first few sections. It's like, yeah. if, I, if I'm going to say like, so what, or, you know, what's in it for me? These are, these are questions I should be asking myself when I'm reading my emails that are going out to people. If your prospect's mm -hmm. going to say like, well, what's in it for me? You haven't answered that question. You need to figure out to, to, to get that done. Right. Or if they're going to be like, yeah, so what? Like I'm familiar, but like, so what, what do you, what is this about? Let's yeah. a demonstration. Why, 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 why? That's a big one. Okay. Why? <laughs> if you can't answer okay. the why, that's going to be challenging. Okay. So basically, pr you know, print out your email or save a tree, just put it on your phone and go walk over to somebody else in your company and be like, so what, you know, like ask, so what to your email before you send it? Because that's, I mean, if you're, if somebody else reads it and they're asking, so what, in your company, then you can bet that whoever the prospect is, is reading it. They're going to be like, so what, why, who cares? Right. So you've yep. got to have, you got to have more. I mean, I mean, I like, I like the, the chat, the think thinking of like some kind of challenge, like, you know, are you dealing with that same problem? Because if you are, we can definitely help you. I mean, that's like, cause you're kind of fishing in a way you're, you're, you're trying to, you're throwing it out there. You're seeing if they have the problem that you solve. So you got to make that really clear at the end there, I think. Yep. That's so let's great. try it. it, it yeah. well, even more importantly, I think there's a question that came in earlier too, where it's like, well, yeah. how do I do this to this segment? And this like, look, if you don't, if you've never actually talked to somebody that is specific to the buyer you're selling to, like you don't, if you don't have a friend that looks like that or a friend that knows someone that looks like that, and you haven't had a real conversation with them at some point, go do that now right? Like go find us. I think the question here was uh, a CIO of, uh, let me see where, where it went chat in the fortune, chat. Fortune 1000. Yeah. CIO of fortune 1000, right? Like go yeah. find, I mean, look, the world is very small now, you know, go and find someone who knows someone where you can just sit down and ask them a few questions. Like what are your top three priorities? <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. how do you prefer to learn about products or services? You know, would you ever take a cold call if, in fact, it re resonated with one of those top three priorities? I get it if it's not, but would you? How do you, you know, these are types of questions you should start asking and knowing. And it will help you start to realize when you're messaging out to the market, first, there are a lot of different ways that people like to receive information, right? I hate, I, like, literally, I hate cold emails because every time I go to my inbox, it's like, oh, my God, I got to go and, like, I want to, I want to respond to certain, some of these, sometimes some people are helpful, but that's why I post my phone number in my LinkedIn profile. You can call me and, uh, and it, it leave a voicemail and I'll call you back. Right. I always do that. But that's my preferred channel. Your preferred channel might be email. Someone else's might be, you have to get a referral. Right. But learning about the top priorities of the people you're selling to, and then figuring out by using these like multi-channel, multi-touch outreach strategies, uh, will help you, um, up level your 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 game because it's there's no secret sauce to this stuff it's about hey can you solve a problem for me or not and are you in the right channel you know where i like to receive this information if you miss on those you're just not going to have success doesn't mean that yeah. your message is off right it just means that you've got to be able to figure out how to how to engage them at the right time with that message so yeah yeah that was good R ryan and, and I think you write about that in your book too. Um, you know, finding out more about your target audience is huge. And that's something that you can do today um, and go out and, and talk with them um, because it's, it's hard. Like if you're just entering the workforce and you, you've never been a CIO of a Fortune 1000 company and now your boss is breathing down your neck to go start cold calling them and have a good conversation. I mean, dude, like where do you even start? You got to go out, talk to those people ask them questions, find out about their industry and, you know, learn more about that, exactly what Ryan said, where they spend their time and how they get their messaging. Otherwise, you know, you're just more noise. Um, so that was a great question. So whoever wrote that your, your homework is to, um, you know, set up five, you know, coffees with fortune 1000 CIOs or just somebody who's a CIO who will take a, a coffee with you and just ask them a bunch of questions. Um, 
So Ryan, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna try to play one of the calls um, that you recorded and and sent in and um, and see if I can get this going. Excuse my. So you're um, getting placements even if you don't necessarily have uh, uh, the opportunity. And could you hear that, Ryan? It's coming through. Yeah. Okay, great. So I'm gonna start this at the beginning. Ryan was brave enough to um, share some of his um, hard-won lessons here. And um, Ryan, we've got some Q&A and some comments coming in. I don't know, can you, from a panel perspective, can you read some of those? Yes. Okay, cool. So let's just hold on there for a minute. We'll, we'll um, listen to this um, cold call and um, we'll break it down a little bit. Sound good? Sounds great. Maven. I have no idea what that is. They told me Whitney Johnson was on the phone. I'm sorry. Who are you, sir? Whit Whitney Johnson? Uh, I'm not sure uh, how that happened. Um, yeah, so I was actually uh, calling to see if what we do to help IT recruiters make more money might benefit your team. Uh, we're, we're, not an IT, we're not an IT recruiter. We just do CEOs. Oh, just CEOs. Yep. So, um, no, so wait, but I'm sorry. I'm just in the middle of something. I have to leave for a meeting. Let's cut to the quick. You special, like for example, we may have a client that wants us to find a chief technology officer. Is that something where you guys would be able to provide candidates? Is that what you're suggesting or not? Yeah, that's correct. So we have a, a the first uh, recruiter to recruiter platform where we're helping um, folks get access to talent uh, in a unique way. Uh, so if you're looking for uh, folks. Um, and or if you have companies that are looking for folks and you don't have the candidates, we match them up in our platform and you can um, make sure that you're getting placements even if you don't necessarily have uh, uh, the opportunity uh, really in front of them to me. So, Okay, uh, okay but Ryan, I'm going to pause right there. And first of all, thank you for sending this in because <laughs> you're, you're, the, you're the breaker and builder and you're actually putting yourself out there to, to send this in. So I appreciate that. And, um, you know, the first thing that I noticed on that call is that he um, actually gave you, like, a lot more than 90% of the calls give you, um, in that he asked you to cut to the chase after kind of a rocky start on there. Um, and now, a lot of people don't do that. They would have just hung, it up, hung up on that point. Um, what, do you, what do you think made him, you know, give you that little extra, you know, like link on the chain to be able to open it up a little bit. I mean, th th there's no magic in that, right? It's just a conversation no. that happened. Uh, for for this, this recording that came out, there's several others where people may have just hung up. But in this particular uh, recording, which you'll hear in the front of it, because you cut out the name and all that stuff, which is good. Thanks for not sharing clients information. Uh, you know, it, start, it starts with the Navigate script. And so it was uh, confirm target and then introduce myself and I shut up. And he's like, I'm sorry, who, what, who are you? Right. And so right away, he, he acted like a fighter, but then he started asking a lot of questions. Wait, so you can help me with this. And he moved into what they call like a detective. He wanted a lot of information. How does this work? And, um, mm. and that led to a very long conversation. Uh, that, that continues to go on for a cold call. That's not very typical, even though he said he had to run. He said, it, you know, from the beginning, you heard like, no, we only do this. Nope, I got to go anyway, but hold on while I have you. Can I answer some, you know, ask you some more questions? And um, there's no secret sauce to that. It was just me entering into the conversation, shutting up for a second and letting him go. And I'm telling you this Navigate 2.0 uh, scripting, it's early on, it's, it's, uh, it, it does make a difference, right? So you can start to shift your conversation a bit um, uh, as you learn. One thing that okay. I didn't do well in there is, you know, he asked a specific question and then I gave him a more generic answer. I should have just said, that's correct, right? And shut the hell up again and let him go. But I kept talking. Uh, but maybe okay. that's why, but maybe that's why conversation continued going back to your data from the beginning where the more you talk uh the, the more success the cold call could be um because i do end up rambling a little bit and he continues to stay on the line yeah i mean that that that's what's amazing about it is that that you had sparked just enough interest in the beginning of where I, it feels like if you can connect that first 
chain link, then you're, you'll be in pretty good shape as long as you don't, um, you know, mess up anymore. If, the, if you actually get them to ask one question, I think you're in pretty good shape. So, and, that, and you were able to do that. Well, and keep in mind that, like, if you listen to it, I said, yeah, the reason for the call was, and I got right into yeah. it. And this was that disqualifier, qualifier I mentioned earlier, right? Yeah. I called to see if what we do to help IT recruiters. So that's specific, right? It's very specific. IT recruiters make more money. Fairly generic, but if you're a recruiter, who doesn't want to make more money? That's a top priority. If I interviewed a rec recruiter and said, hey, what is important to you? Probably making more placements, making more money, right? So... I got very specific and aligned to a top priority right away. And so while the uh, targeting was a bit off, like, oh, we only work with recruiters, although our CEOs, although he shifted into what if I have a CTO? Yeah, we can help with that, right? Uh, that's tech, that's tech. Um, uh, and money, 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 money. Okay, I wanna learn more about this, maybe, right? So yeah. getting that reason for the call as personalized as possible, right? Um, into one of those top priorities is key to getting to that next stage. Yeah. And I, I think, um, you know, the one thing that people don't talk about a lot is just having that improv, the improv skills, because, you know, it, that could have gone way off the rails because he was like, we don't do that. That's not even what I do. I, you know, he, he threw you a total curveball, but you were able to kind of improv and open it up just enough to keep the conversation going. And I think that's where people get really stuck as well. Um, so I, I keep getting these pop-ups, like there's a lot of questions coming in and uh, people are really interested. Are there any, any questions there that you see, Ryan, that uh, we can help, help with real quick? I'll bring up yeah. the next one. Yeah, I'm monitoring. Let's just get going into the next. This, this is more about a, a cadence. We can get to this later, Matthew. Um, okay. Let's get into the recordings, yeah. Yeah, okay. So let's, let's try this one. Hey, Palmer, this is Avery with Source Maven. How are you doing this morning? Good. Oh, great. Uh, my name is probably not uh, ringing a bell here. I actually called to see if what we do to help IT recruiters make more money might benefit your team. Oh, is this the same guy? It's a different call. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah. All right. The, the, <laughs> dude, that was classic at the beginning. It's like, good. <laughs> That's the navigation. Hey, Palmer, this right is Avery there. with Source Maven. How are you doing this morning? Good. Okay, so so I'm a, let me just pause this right here. Um, and I'm sorry if this this iTunes thing is, is distracting, but we'll just deal with it. Um, so so you say I, uh, this is uh, Avery with Source Maven. How you doing? Is that what you said? How you doing today? Yeah. How you, how you doing today is good and. Yeah. So, okay. So how are you? All right, go ahead. And he oh, says, good. Great. Uh, my name's probably not uh, ringing a bell here. I actually called to see if what we do to help IT recruiters make more money might benefit your team. Uh, we're actually the first recruiter to recruiter talent exchange. So if you have candidates you can't place, we give you a way to monetize the time you've spent with them. And if you have openings you can't fill, we, we allow you to pick from a, a curated list of actively searching qualified candidates um, who have been submitted uh, and validate and vetted from others uh, actively uh, on the market, but might have just missed in that final round of interviews, uh, giving you high quality candidates uh, on demand. Um, I was just curious if uh, you're more focused on maybe finding more talent to place or acquiring more clients uh, as the bank of talent you've been building. You know, it's an interesting concept you guys have. Uh, at this wow, okay, I'm sorry. I, I know it's like, everyone's on the edge of their seat, but I just wanted to pause it right there because I thought that that, that was a brilliant uh, use of extending the beginning of the call a little bit so that you had enough time to actually um, reiterate your value prop in a way that's interesting to the person because you confirmed the target and it was specific and aligned to that persona. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. And, and it, was, it was just enough information to go, huh, that's different, and make him pause for just a second to give you a little breathing room there. Okay, let's keep it going. Fine, I'm just not interested in even going through the motions on it. Uh, but check back sometime in the early uh, February 
time frame, if you don't mind putting me on that list, I might have a need then for something like this to get involved. Okay, no problem. Uh, Palmer, I'm happy to um, make a note to follow up in February. Uh, I do want to just highlight uh, what we're doing is risk-free. So if um, if you wanted to poke around and, and see if there's talent to, uh, on the platform already that you could place and or um, – you had talent that you want to monetize, uh, you can get started for absolutely free. Uh, it's 100% based on um, candidates being placed. So if you were to pull someone from the platform and, and you place them, you would you would pay back to the platform as a, uh, a placement fee. Um, but uh, on the flip side, if you um, are actually able to put someone in the platform to get and they become placed, you would be you would be paid. But there's no charge to you in that regard. Okay, that is really interesting. And I, I think if I take anything away from the call today, Ryan, it's, uh, you know, I just want you to know that this is risk free. I mean, that's like a brilliant statement, because it, it totally releases all the tension from the call. So I, I thought that that was a great way to put it. Now, you know, folks on the call might be selling something that costs 20 or $30,000 to implement, and it's not free. So um, you know, any pointers on what you could say at that point when you get the, you know, hey, not interested, call me back in six months? Yeah, I mean, so I'm early in this conversation, these are cold calls. So, you know, when folks are saying, hey, this sounds kind of interesting, get back to me in February, you know, I want to, the intention for me, my goal of these conversations right now are try to get people into the platform because it is like, there's no risk for them to get started. So the, the goal, number one goal for me is to first qualify. Are they a fit Two, let's get them in signed up three. Let's get them. Let's actually get them candidates in there uh, into the platform who get placed. So they get paid. So they're continuing to do that. Right. Like that's kind of the, the, the goal of the conversation. So if I'm yeah. selling, if I'm selling software when there isn't, a process like that, right? There's not like a free sign up, you know, there's not a yeah. freemium that I can drive them to. There's not a, uh, a process like that, that, that I have the one, two, three, I need to know the intent. I need to know what I'm trying to accomplish in this conversation. And for a cold yeah. call, uh, uh, and I'm hacking this a little bit, Jeb Blunt talks about this in fanatical prospecting. It's like, there's like three or four outcomes, right? One is to gather information. Two is to book a next conversation. Three is to move a deal forward. Um, that's kind of it, right? Like the intention that we have for these these cold calls. And yeah. in some cases, it's all of those things. And, and, and others, it's just some of that, right? It might just be just getting a little bit of information. Are you the right person? Thank you so much. I'm, you know, like, I at least confirm that I'm going to follow up. Uh, it, you know, and then mm -hmm. it could go all the way to I need to get you into a meeting. Uh, so when people brush you off or push you off, you have to first understand what am I trying to accomplish in this call today and did I accomplish it? While I have you, if my first and most important information is no problem, I'm gathering information anyway, in February, what's gonna change between now and then, right? What's gonna change between now and then that would make this more interesting to you? I could gather some more information. So the worst case scenario, when I follow up in February, I'll have a little bit more information around why and again, I'm going to say this over and over and over and over and over again. Why is so important? Why am I continuing to reach out to you? Why am I reaching out to you in the first place? Why do I want to continue to try to help you? I need to understand how to answer that question. Because if I can't, then there's no point of us having a conversation in the first place. And so while I might not have a risk-free, you know, get started today offer that says, cool, let's keep talking. I still can ask a question to get me that information necessary. So the next time I can provide more value in the conversation. Nice. Okay. So we, we, we want to have our destination for the call at hand and a big note on your desk that says, why, like, why, <laughs> why are you calling? Have that ready to go every time. So, because maybe just gathering information right now is, is the benefit of it and trying to, trying to get that set up. And it seems like people will give you an initial blow off even if it's not true that they're just trying to get you off the phone so that they can move to the next thing that they have on their plate. Um, and maybe that breaks it out a little bit and you can get some value from that. Um, so this is good. So dude, we've got a, we've got a couple more. We, we running up against the hour, Ryan. So we'll, why don't we save those for next time? Are there any, any questions that we can um, knock out 
before we jump off here and um, let these let these folks use some of this uh, material that they're taking away from the call. So Matthew, uh, Matthew had a question before when when it came up before we got into the last recording about uh, uh, campaign touch patterns. What's the recommended cadence structure? Call, email, LinkedIn touch combo. Also the duration of the campaign. Example: fourteen day, seven touch campaign, five day, etc. What have you found success with, um, David? What do you think on on this one? Yeah, so I think that. Um, you have to think omni-channel. I mean, I think that that's table stakes now. And when I say omni-channel, that's just a fancy way of saying you've got to use all the different um, mediums that your target audience is interacting with. And so, you know, one client that I worked with, or, or they were calling on farmers in the Midwest to try to get them to, you know, download an app for their phone. And they only use the phone. They're not sitting at a desk all day. So, so in that case, the duration of the campaign is going to be heavy on the phone. And I recommend it always leaving a voicemail <laughs> every time, but try to catch them on the phone because that's where they live. Now, if you're calling on, you know, digital marketers who, um, you know, live all day in, in LinkedIn and, and on Facebook or whatever, then that's where you want to build up, uh, you know, the touches on the campaign. And, and it doesn't have to just be like in the question, Matthew, one LinkedIn touch. You know, it could be a couple of uh, value added messages that have nothing to do with trying to set a meeting, you know, pointing them toward resources or trying to help them or inviting them into a group. Um, and, you know, like Gary Vaynerchuk says, you know, jab, jab, jab before you do the right hook, like give them some value in the, me in the uh, medium where they hang out and give them enough value so that you build a little bit of credibility before asking them for a meeting. I, I think, um, you know, that's really important, especially on the social side. Um, and then, you know, A-B testing. If 14 days is not working, try to elongate it out, add some new touches, put in some phone, put in some different mediums, you know, try some different things until you can find something that starts to hit. I think I think the big thing there for me is like, look, you got to keep testing, right? I don't think there's a yeah. secret sauce for any of this stuff. We can show you examples of what has worked in the past. If you did that today to the same person, it might not work again, right? Um, and so while we want to have a process or a methodology that works and we want to have a template that we can build on, if you, if you don't stop testing and you don't stop trying new things, uh, eventually you're going to, you're going to fall flat. So, um, always be testing is a, is a strong mindset there, but uh, a great question, Matthew. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the sales, this, what we do is so analytical now, there's so much data out there and there's so much testing required that it almost feels like I, I've written about this before, that we need almost like a new position on the sales development team of someone who's an, um, you know, analyzing what we're doing every day and giving us some, um, you know, vision into the data. And, um, and so I know if you're an SDR and you're watching this, you're like, Hey, we don't have anything like that, but it, it, it's, it's something that could be, you know, if you're of an analytical mindset that you look toward, uh, in your career as something that you can work toward, because there's not a lot of people out there who can really analyze the data that sales development teams are producing and be able to a B test and, and use it to move the messaging forward. And I think that that'll be a really valuable skill set in the future. So just something to think about. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I, know, I know we're running up on the hour here. Does anyone else have any more questions for us? Yeah, I think we are good. Um, I just got one that, yeah, the recording, I will throw it up on YouTube. Um, just type in, um, hey, thanks, Micah. You're you're awesome too. Um, I don't know if you can see that. But, um, uh, we'll throw it up on YouTube. It'll be free. Um, it just type in ten bound um, YouTube or or ten bound uh, webinar or something like that, and you'll be able to find it. Be sure to subscribe. I also before I forget, Ryan, I, I want to make an offer to anybody. Um, we we do we do SDR training, and um, I noticed that 
you know, people would take the training and then they would kind of forget about all the stuff that they learned in the training and just go back to what they were doing. So we're developing a coaching program where, um, you know, we'll spend an hour a week with you and just quiz you on this stuff and run through mock calls, role plays, like give you a ton of practice without having you screw up in front of your clients. And um, it's in like guinea pig status right now. So anybody on the call who wants, um, you know, a free month of that coaching, um, just ping me and, um, and uh, you can get it for free because you're on the call. So it's usually eight seventy five a month, but we'll give it to you for free for being on the call. And um, we'll take the first person who emails me. It's David at tenbound.com. Oh, ping me. <laughs> Sorry, Danny. Um, uh, dude, I've been, I've been in Silicon Valley way too fucking long. I'm sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> ping, ping, I think means contact me in some kind of electronic way. Um, yeah. so, um, text, uh, uh, snap, LinkedIn, just some way to contact me and say, Hey, I want to get that. And, um, we'll get you hooked up. I'll give away one of those for free. So, Ryan, uh, <laughs> what's my, what's slide my, into my DMs. Thank you, Jason. It, yeah, that is awesome. Uh, what a, <laughs> what an offer for somebody. You better get on that. Ping him quickly. Did you guys change that <laughs> to Wolf from the office? You know, <laughs> Wolf him. Yeah, Wolf him. All wow. right. Well, Ryan, Ryan Reiser at the Sales Developers, dude. If anybody, and while we're in offer land, like if anybody is trying to ramp up their sales development program. I worked with these guys when we put the conference together. They are freaking amazing. They're growing. They do a great job if you need an extra um, hand on the sales development side. Ryan, thank you so much for being on the call, sharing your knowledge, and um, we'll see you on the next break and build. All right. Thank you, David. Keep up the great work, man. It's a pleasure being here. All right. Thanks, everybody. Take care.